You know, there's nothing like being in the green room. It's where all the magic happens, and it's where it all goes down. So I'm super excited because we get to have a conversation with the one and only Colonel George Milton. I'm really excited because he's talking about something that's very important to all of us, which is failure. It's like the first step. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But first, let me just ask the question that I love to ask because you already have his bio. I know you already Google him. Some of you have already been on Amazon. I get it. But let me ask uh, Colonel George Milton, one, who are you? And more importantly, what are you up to these days, my man? Say, hey, outstanding, man. Look, thank you for this awesome opportunity here. Yeah, you know, I'm just a um, uh, regular guy, you know, single dad that um, uh, had a uh, you know, a lot of failure in his life, uh, you know, start, you know, started out, um, uh, you know, um, uh, years ago, uh, just a lot of failure when I, you know, started out kindergarten, first grade, just, just, just tremendous amount of failure, you know, two teenage parents, that sort of thing. And just, just, you know, along the, along the path of my life, man, as I started out, you know, in the very adverse, you know, uh, poverty stricken environment. And, um, uh, I had uh, an experience with someone along the way who changed my mindset, uh, where, you know, in regards to this failure thing that I've been, you know, struggling with and the, um, uh, was depressed with. But, man, I tell you, um, uh, failure for me has gotten to be uh, the greatest resource on the planet. So, normal guy, you know, just retired here about a year and a half ago, you know, from the Army. And um, I have actually started a motivational speaking company, Coach and Mention Training. And um, uh, that's a little bit of what I'm, uh, I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to get up to speed on it. Good. Now, let me, let me ask a question, if, if I can. Um, you this topic we're going to talk about this evening, um, why do you feel it's, it's relevant for, especially where we are in the world today? I mean, there's so much going on, uh, so many folks taking big risks, so many folks doing things they've never done before. Um, for the single mom that's watching right now, or the married couple, um, or the dualpreneur that worked all day, and now they're at home working on their business, and they're tuning in right now, uh, why is this conversation more relevant to them now than ever before? Yeah, hey, thanks. A question to you. A couple of reasons here. Number one is if, if you look at not only our nation, but you look at the planet, look at all the things that are going on from a leadership standpoint. There is just a tremendous amount of failure everywhere. I mean, no matter where you look, you know, someone asked me the other day, I mean, why are there so many books on leadership? Right. And the answer is simply this, because there is a void there. There are people who are wanting and needing and requiring leadership because there is so much failure along the way. Now, for that single person or whomever it is that um, who may be at home, you know, thinking about becoming successful, well, here's the way it works. It worked for me, and I think the way it works for everybody. If you want to become successful, say, you must walk through the doorway of failure. You know, most people try with their darnest to actually to avoid something that would actually be the greatest resource if they applied it in the right sort of way. You talk to a lot of leaders throughout the world who are relevant and those who are extremely wealthy, and they'll tell you that they've learned way more lessons from their failures than they ever did from their successes. Not that they didn't learn from the successes, but the things that actually made them, uh, you know, the persons that they actually are and their business thrive is that they learned from those failures and those experiences by which they endured. You know, that's, 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 that's spot on right there. And I, and I love how you stated that and how important that is, especially for the person out there that says, oh, my gosh, what if I fail? You're like, well, it's just the start, by the way. Um, we're going to get into the other side uh, about what you've written in the book. But I'm, I'm curious. You retired now. Uh, thanks for serving, uh, serving our country. Um, Thank you. What's your big why now? Like, you, you don't have to do this. But yet you're on this mission, you're on this crusade from our very conversation to get this message out. So what is your big why for someone that's meet you for the first time and says, why is Colonel George Milton doing this? Yeah, you know, interesting. Uh, a lot of people are, are more concerned, say, with uh, their why. For me, when it comes to failure, I'm not so much concerned about my why, because I know why I do things. You know, when it comes to the failure piece, I'm concerned more about what now, Right. So once I have failed, the once people fail, I mean, you know, there, there's this, we get so caught up into these colloquialisms and those kinds of things, right? And, you know, you know Simon Sinek and, uh, you know, what's your why? And that's incredibly important, you know, in some aspects. But when it comes to the failure piece, I'm more concerned about if you go out and fail, do you give up or do you continue, right? So it's really about what now, you know? Where do I go from now? How do I get from where I am to where I'm supposed to be concerning, right, the failure piece? So the why for me is not nearly as important as the what now. 
in terms of the failure message. Mm, I like that. The what now? I can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a show for, for Megan that's out there. Good to see you. Michelle McArthur is out there. Thanks for tuning in. Roosevelt Morris, my man, he's in the house. He's in the building, by the way. Uh, and Marsha, Nene, and so many folks that are tuned in right now. When we get on the other side, we're going to learn all about this methodology. I'm going to ask him to give you one, two, or three ideas that you can use. And we're going to find out, has he ever failed before? And how did that occur to be his first lesson? We'll be back. We've got a show, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait. In five, this is going to be so much fun. Four, my favorite part. Three, two, one. It's showtime. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the field, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower. Our mission is to inspire. And our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And I like to always share at least three visions that you have. It's a good reminder. I believe first you have a vision for yourself. There's a certain way that you want to live. There's a certain home that you want to be in. There's a certain car that you want to drive. There's organic food. I hope it's organic food or whatever that you want to eat. And it takes resources, which means you need revenue to make that a reality. Then there's a second vision I believe you have. You have a vision for your loved ones. I mean, the ones that you care the most about. I mean, the kid that you want to send to a school of your choice. Uh, the check you want to write for a cause you believe in or someone's health care insurance. Uh, my case, Mother Dear is 73. She's going on 74 in July, and she loves to use Amazon. She loves to get out. How many know the Amazon card is connected to my credit card? <laughs> but she's really good during this time of, of really being able to use it, by the way. But it takes revenue. It takes resources. And then the third vision I believe you have is you have a vision for the people you, not me, but you were called to serve. And I like to always share the example of Noah in the Bible. And you don't have to be a believer, although I'm a believer. You don't have to be one. But imagine you're Noah in the Bible, right? And imagine that, that you have this big mission given to you by God. You've got the experience and expertise. And then right before you to get going, there's a knock at the door. Someone says, yo, Noah. They did say yo back in the way in the day, just to let you know that. There's a problem. There, there, there are no nail. There's no hammers in the house. Noah says, no big deal. I'm not worried about that. I'll, we'll be okay. And then there's another knock. Boom, boom, boom. And someone says, shorty. They did say shorty back in the day just to let you know. Shorty, they ain't, there's no nails in the house either. We, we ain't got no nails, no hammer, no nails. Rule number one, I never panic. And imagine someone's in the back, and they're screaming, and they're jumping up and down saying, Noah, Noah, Noah. Noah's like, what? What? Please. And they said, there's no wood, and there's no people to put the boat together. Good luck on this mission. <sighs> and maybe that's you. You've got a big heart. You've got goals. You've got dreams. But maybe you failed and you're like, I don't know about that. Maybe you tried and didn't work out. Or this morning, this evening, this afternoon, no matter what time you are, wherever you are in the world, Colonel George Milton showed up for one reason, one reason only. And that's that you know that failure is just the first step to the key to success. What's going on, George? How you feeling, man? Doing good. Shay, doing real good, man. All excited about uh, your message. All excited about this program and uh, hoping to be able to change some people's lives and get that mindset swapped from saying, Failure is negative and getting up to speed and saying that it's positive, man. Well, let's just uh, let's address the elephant in the room, which for a lot of folks, they might be wondering, how did this book title come about? Like, 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 what's the backstory that led yeah. George to saying this message has to be told and it's ready. I'm ready now to change some lives. So give us the backstory that led you to that defining moment. And you said yeah. this project is going to be done. 
It's going to be done a certain way. Yeah, yeah, AJ, thank you for the question. You know, look, I, I failed miserably. I mean, I failed the first grade. I failed kindergarten. I failed almost virtually every grade thereafter. You know, elementary school, junior high, high school. Barely graduated from high school. I had to take a correspondence course. Didn't even know what correspondence was. Couldn't spell it, man. Uh, the correspondence course was from uh, Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches, Texas, in a hard science, botany. I mean, just tons and tons and tons of failure. So I ended up taking the, you know, the, you know, the exam and, uh, you know, passed it, you know, with a D, you know, still wasn't the best in the world, but, you know, got through it and went ahead and graduated and went off to college, right? And before it was all said and done, I'd actually failed out of six colleges, man, trying to, get, you know, literally trying to play professional football and, you know, taking all these PE classes and all that couldn't keep up academically. That's how I actually ended up in the military. So one night I was in the barracks. And I, my platoon sergeant, sergeant first class, George Gaither, first class, George Gaither, saw me moping around in the barracks. And what had happened earlier that day, I'd gone to the weapons qualification range and I boloed. I failed the weapons qualification range. I grew up hunting so I could fire weapons, but not this particular type of weapon. So he saw me and he says, hey, man, you know, what, what's going on here? So, you know, I said to him, but look here, tons of failure throughout my life. I mean, I, you know, I'm just really I've been stressed, depressed about this just for years now. And he says to me, look, soldier, you know, when it comes to failure, failure is not the problem. It's how you respond to the failure. That's what the key is. So throughout from that moment to now, the trajectory of my life literally changed, changed from seeing failure as negative in how we've been taught to positive. See, I have come to realize in my life, right? And in most people's lives say that failure doesn't even really exist. Check this out. When we're children, right? If we have a task or a challenge, we typically do one of two things. We will either figure it out or we just kind of move on and do something else. We never even think about it as failure. So it doesn't really exist until people introduce it into our lives. And then all of a sudden, now it becomes a major issue for us. And for some folks, they never get past that. For me, thank God for Sergeant First Class Gaither, who changed my mindset to see failure as positive as opposed to negative. So when I returned from Germany to here, my daughter and I was working on starting a business. And what I wanted to do is actually I had this, she created this little weird kind of smiley face sort of thing that I wanted to get um, uh, registered with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And we sent it in and uh, it, it failed, right? So they sit back and say, look here, there's something out in the market that's very similar to this. And, you know, you're a no-go here. So she was very, very distraught. I was a little bit upset and I was a little embarrassed and ashamed because of her. And I said to myself, man, another failure. I mean, how am I going to ever get past this? And just as I was having that thought, you know, I remember what Gaither said. He says, hey, failure is not the problem. Right. And I said, wait a minute. I need to chronicle the failures I've had in my life. The progress that I've made because of the failure, because I transformed the way in which I see failure is positive as opposed to negative. Failure makes me get stronger, get better, get wiser, right? Change direction. Changing direction isn't the same as quitting. Some people say, well, you know, you, you fail, so therefore you quit. No, I just kind of switch the directions. So I went into writing this book and says, OK, you know, because I had that particular failure and says, you know what? Failure is not the problem. It's the beginning of my success. If I handle it the right way, and I, in fact, I came up with an equation: F plus R R equals S. Oh, wait, now what's the, wait, 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 wait a yeah. minute. Give it, give us the equation. He's about to give us yeah. some some equation here, and this this is really good for those folks that are tuning in. You listen to Colonel George Milton, and he's saying that failure is not the problem; it's just the beginning of success. He's about to give us this quote, but do me a favor before he gives us this formula. By the way, do me a favor. We want to pay this message for it. We want to help someone else out there because we believe in the giver's economy, and the giver's economy says the person that outgives the competition out earns the competition. The person out gives the competition, out earns the competition. So do me a favor, hit the share button. Hit the share button right now. Copy the link, pay it forward to your network. Help someone else right now be able to overcome not only a failure, not only a setback, but to just look at it differently and understand this is the beginning of my success. Do it now. Take your two thumbs, hit the share button, do it now. All right, Colonel George Milton, you was breaking it down for us and about to share with us kind of step by step with this formula. This equation is for Pamela Conley is out there, for Jacqueline Jeter is out there, for Grace Holden is out there, for Danny Don Hubbard is out there, Shelby Fountain and Pastor Paulette's in the house. You bring out the rock stars. For all the folks out there, this is your moment. This is your time. All right, Colonel George Milton, 
break down that formula for us, please. Say thank you. So, so look for all of the persons that are out there within listening ear in our site. Here's the way this works. Anytime you, anyone you know, right, you fail. Remember this equation: F plus R R equals S. That's F plus R R equals S. That's failure plus right response equals success. So if you want success, if you learn how to respond to failure in the right sort of way, then you're good to go. You know, what, one of the things, one of the books I was reading here is a book by a guy by the name of Jack uh, Canfield. You know, he wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, books. And one of the things that I love in his training and his teachings in that particular book, he has 67 principles within that book, right? And the, 60, uh, the first principle out of the 67 is this. You have to take 100% responsibility for yourself. And oftentimes when we come to the failure thing, you know, you go back and we do the shaming, blaming, and complaining route. That's not what this is about. This is taking total responsibility for oneself. So if you use that equation, when you fail, right, make the right response. And you'll become successful. Because if you do that, you're going to learn from those failures. Because who was it? Oprah Winfrey said this. Look, failure is merely experiences. And that's how this works. So we don't need to see failure as this albatross around our necks. We need to be motivated about failure. When I get up in the morning, one of the first things I do, right, is I meditate and I think about what I'm grateful for. And I look forward to what I'm going to learn today based upon different types of failures that I may have to experience. So I already have a positive attitude when I leave my residence that if I go out and I don't accomplish you know, whatever those goals, those dreams, those aspirations are for that day, right? I already know that if I come up against a challenge and I don't accomplish it, then there is a lesson that I'm going to be learning in that. Most people focus on what? Success. In order to become successful, you've got to walk through the doorway of failure. So this is all about becoming positive. This is all about changing your mindset to see failure as the greatest resource on the planet. So you go out, you win, 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 win. There's no such thing as that. You know, most people sell, you know, you can go out and become anything that you want. I don't believe that. And here's why I don't believe that. I wanted to become a professional football player. I was pretty good. All right. Went to college off a football scholarship. I mean, you know, like my daddy said, it ain't bragging if it's fact, man. I was pretty good. Okay. Right. But it wasn't good enough to become a pro. Why? Because I didn't have the right skill sets. Now, look, what I did, right, and what failure helped me do, Shay, is it helped me focus on certain talents, gifts, skills, and abilities that God gave me. I became a lot more successful when I focused on those talents, gifts, skills, and abilities that I innately had. So all through my life, the, the athletic piece, right, the discipline piece, the yes sir and no sir piece that I grew up with, made me ready for the military. I never even wanted to go into the military. The only reason I went into the military is because, as I said earlier, I failed out of college, failed out of six of those. Now, how do you take a guy who grew up in an impoverished environment, could barely read, could barely write, right? Dropped or failed out of six colleges and universities. People would laugh when I said I wanted to become an officer because they said, son, you don't have the right pedigree. But here's what I did because of that mindset. Not only did I graduate from college, I earned four degrees, two masters, one from the United States Army War College, 17 hours toward a doctorate, and for those folks who said, you know what, you're never going to be an officer. In 2018, I was inducted into the Officer Candidate School Hall of Fame. Now, how does one do that sort of thing? It's because I transformed my mindset to see failure as my superpower, as they use as a colloquialism within the confines of the world today. Right. So failure became my greatest resource because I switched it from being negative to being positive. Failure is my best friend because now if I have the right attitude, see, your attitude will determine your altitude, right? So the attitude was positive now, not negative, as it was in the future when I actually started because it was very, 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 very dire and uh, very, very uh, depressing, to be quite honest. So here's something that was really interesting. When I wrote the book, doing the research, no one wanted to talk to me about failure. I would approach people and they just didn't want to talk and they wouldn't be honest about it. They try to make up stories, you know, just make stuff up. And I would just kind of break it down. I said, no, I really want to talk to you about this from a positive perspective. So because no one wanted to talk to me about that topic, I said, you know what? I got to figure out, you know, if I'm going to write this book, if I want people to be interested in it, I have to come up with a strategic plan to be able to get them interested. So I actually wrote the book. I wrote a workbook. 
and I wrote a journal all at the same time and released them a little bit over a year ago. And that's how people have actually gotten interested in the book, and that's what kind of where we are today. Man, I, I love the story. I love the backstory. I love how you broke that down and gave such clear examples. I'm curious for the person that's out there just watching this thinking, gosh, I get failure is there, but it's so painful. It's like, it's like you put everything into something. Like you said, you, you know, was going out for the football team and it didn't work when I said the pro, trying to make the pros and it didn't work. And, yeah. and I know for me, when we launch a product, I'll say that, or we put all our energy behind a client and try to get everything just right and it just doesn't happen. It's so painful. Um, what do you, what are some, maybe some affirmations you tell yourself or, or what is your mindset? Because I know down the road, maybe this will be a lesson I learned, but in that moment, it's yeah. just depressing. I'm even, I try to be the good guy and I'm just like, I mean, I might waddle for an hour sometime, just like, God, I mean, what possibly, I mean, why me? What happened? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, 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 so take a moment and talk about what do you advise? I know some of you probably do your coaching class, but in that moment when it's happening and the guilt is there, you feel yeah. bad, you let everyone down, including yourself, uh, what do you tell yourself? How do you handle that moment? So you've tapped into something that's very critical here because mm -hmm. what you're talking about and the reason people feel that way is this, right? It's conditioning. People have been conditioned to see failure in that sort of way, right? So we have in the Army what we call acronyms, right? We come up with all these acronyms. So I, so I looked at this, and I came up with an acronym for what I'm about to tell you here. Is You've heard the term or the phrase that um, uh, people can't become successful because they're uh, fearful of failure. Throughout my life and throughout this research, see, I don't believe that. I don't believe people are fearful of failure because they already know that you know they've been told that they're going to fail, right? So they know that they're is something or an experience that they're going to have by which they're not going to obtain or achieve those goals that they have. So are they really afraid of the failure? No. It's going to happen, right? So here's what I think is going on, is that we've been conditioned to believe that we are fearful of failure, but that's not true. What we've been, what we're really afraid of and what we're really concerned about is not the fearful of failure, but we're concerned about the stigma associated with the failure. So it's not the failure in and of itself, I don't believe, especially for me. It's the stigma associated with it. So that acronym is simply this, stigma, right? It's shameful thoughts I give myself anxiously. That's what stigma is. That's what I, that's what I popped out of my, my head when I was doing this sort of stuff. So are we really afraid of the failure? It's not really the failure. It's the stigma that's actually associated with it. So in order to be able to get from where they are to where they could possibly be in terms of seeing failure is positive, there has to be a mind shift. I'm sure you've heard of you know the fixed mind versus the growth mind. So you've got to move from that fixed mind to that growth mind. And if you can get yourself to the point where you're disciplined enough, right, and conditioned to see failure is positive as opposed to negative, then we're going to be well on our way. And look, say, for years, I woke up in the same sort of mindset in terms of, man, if I don't go out and accomplish this today, then what? Right. So I got to a point where when I would take an exam and I would always say this, I would say, I know what I know and I don't know no more. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know what I know and I don't know no more. And when I walked into an exam with that, I always aced it because I knew I freed myself. Right. From any of the pressures. I knew what I knew. I couldn't know any more than what I knew. And I was able to be able to focus. And when you're able to be able to condition yourself to utilize failure in that sort of way, now it's not something we fear. It is something we are motivated to gravitate toward because failure is going to be the key to becoming successful. You know, Jim Jim Washington said this. I love this, man. He says, look, when it comes to being successful. He says that your faith, regardless of what your faith is, your faith is incredibly important, right? So faith is hugely important. He says not only is faith important, you know, luck is important. Luck is tremendously important. He says, but if you have perfect faith and if you have um, uh, uh, perfect luck, right, you still have to do the work. So in order to get from where we are, right, to where we want to be, there's work that's actually that has to be involved. So I had to put in a lot of work, right? And it was I was willing to actually do that to be able to change that mindset from fixed to growth. And I actually along the way I had to break a lot of patterns, right? So when it comes to failure, and when it comes to life, Tay, to be quite honest, 
if you can break certain patterns that I broke in my life, personally, professionally, and also when it comes to failure, the world opens up to you. If you can break those patterns, so it's the same sort of mindset and the same kinds of deals when you're dealing with failure. There are certain patterns that we've been taught, you know, in regards to failure as being negative as opposed to being positive. So if you can break those patterns to see failure, not negative, but positive, something to, to learn from, to get strong as. And you take the Richard Branson's of the world, Oprah Winfrey's of the world, Warren Buffett's. I mean, Steve Jobs, these guys have said they learned way more from their failures than they ever did from their successes. And they're some of the most successful people on the planet. That's how valuable failure is if you utilize it in the right sort of way. Yeah, I love the mindset. I love the belief system. I love how you have the shift, change your mind, change your life, and how you're looking at it. For those folks that are out there, do me a favor. Here's how you give a digital applause. You might wonder, how do I give a digital applause? How do I do this? You hit the share button. You hit the share button. And when you hit that share button, just put serve plus add value. Just hit the share button, and that little box pop up. He's here just serving. He's here adding value. He's not just serving. My mom always says you can't just serve. You got to add value. Anybody mm -hmm. can stand there and look like they're doing something, but who's adding the value? He's adding value and he's serving, and it's all coming together. So hit the share button right now. Please, right now, hit the share button and pay this message for it. Give folks, if you can, I know we're, we're running over in this segment, but I like this because you said, Shay, we can talk about anything. He, he didn't give me a list of questions. He didn't say, Shay, you got to ask this or you must do that. Say, let's just chat like you and I are here. So I'm going to ask a question. If you had to say, okay, here are three things that someone could do. You've given so many, so maybe it's a summary of what you've already done. But if you could like, as I like this phrase, open up the entrepreneur's brain or the person's watching brain right now and dump in there, dump in there like, like three ideas and say, look, I want you to walk away with these three ideas to help you with failure so you understand it's the first step to success. What are three ideas that you would give them? And again, maybe it's a summary of what you've done, but if you're just tuning in or you've been watching, write this down. For those folks out there like Crystal Cunningham, like Carol that's down there in Atlanta, what's up? I see my man Jack in the house. He's down there in Sugarland, I think it is, Texas, and so many folks that are tuning in. Thank you for joining, and thank you for hitting the share button. We appreciate it. Over to you to share three ideas you're going to pour into their brains right now that's going to help them. I think it's incredibly, for, for me, right, it's incredibly important that you believe in yourself. I know you hear that, but a lot of people, I don't, a lot of people don't really believe in themselves, right? They say they believe in themselves because, once again, they've been conditioned to say, I believe in myself. Please, do an introspection. Believe in yourself. It is incredibly important. You know, as, as good as I was in athletics uh, and a lot of the different things that were actually going on in my life, I never really truly believed in myself because of what different things people said, uh, expectations, uh, things I didn't overcome, things I couldn't accomplish. But once I began to literally believe in myself, right, and not be all that concerned about what others, what others actually thought about me, I was able to be able to move beyond where I was to where I was supposed to be. So believe in yourself. Now, second thing is in order to believe in yourself, you need to do some introspection, right? You need to really understand who it is you are in terms of the person you've been created to be. So focus on your talents, your gifts, your skills, and your abilities, right? Believe in self, right? Do introspection. And third, you're not a failure. Please remember this. You're not a failure. You're just on a journey. You're on a path to become the person that you were meant to be. And the way to get from where you are to where you're supposed to be is you're going to have to change the way you think. Right. One of the things that I realized when I came back from Europe is that there are a couple of things that people don't do today. Right. The world over, but also specifically in the United States of America. We don't read anymore. If you don't read, you don't think. In order to be able to do that. Right. The thinking piece, you must read. Right. I used to tell soldiers all the time. If you want to lead, you must read. Tremendously important. So believe in self. Introspection. Right. And know that you're not a failure. You're just on a journey. If you can do those things, use that equation. Folks, I know that there are a lot of folks out there. They've either failed, they are failing, or you're going to fail. What now? Not why, but what now? Say thanks for the question. Failure is not a problem. It's just the beginning of your success. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel good? He's not saying la di da and throwing you know, fairy dust in the sky, by the way, and unicorns falling out the place. He's saying, no, the question is, what now? This is your moment. This is your time. And if you're going to bet, 
bet on yourself. I'm betting on me. I don't know about any of you out there, but I'm betting on me, okay? If I'm going to bet, I'm betting on me right now, and maybe that's you. So bet on you. Hit the share button. What's up, Connie Green? What's up, Tia? What's up? What's up, all of you who are joining? I wish I could get to everybody out there. Hit the share button. If you haven't hit the share button, pay this message forward right now. Please help someone else, like help another entrepreneur or a single mom or a single dad or a married couple that's out there right now that's like, you know what? This is the message that I need to hear right now. You're in the building. You can bring them with you. Uh, we're moving to a segment now called Rapid Fire. And in the segment, rap, I mean Rapid Fire, um, is one of our core methodologies, which is today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. One of our core beliefs here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show. And for those folks that know what I'm about to do, you can look right below the video. You can write those words today. Today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. And for those folks that don't know what I'm doing, you're like, what is Shay doing over there? Well, today is my January 1st. Doesn't represent a date on the calendar. Today is my January 1st represents a moment where you create that date and that in that moment, you make a decision. There's probably a thousand decisions you make throughout the day. And that one decision could change the trajectory of your life. That's a January 1st moment. So that's a, a January 1st moment could be um, you decide you're going to go to the gym and you're going to work out. Re re remember that health goal you had? Or, or you're going to sit back and eat hamburgers and french fries and salt, pepper, ketchup, and hot sauce. That's a January 1st moment. You make a decision that you're going to eat healthy. You make a decision that you're going to take failure as a learning. That's a January 1st. So it's a do over January 1st. It's a fresh start January 1st. It's my past no longer equals my future. So my question to Colonel George Milton, when he hears those words, today is my January 1st. What goes through your mind, my friend? Oh, man, well, that's powerful. That's powerful. Look, my January 1st would simply be this, is that on this day and for the rest of my life, I'm going to make the commitment to change, to transform my mindset, to see failure as positive, not negative. I'm going to get away from all the negative um, uh, information that was actually pumped into my cranium here. And I'm going to literally focus, focus on changing that mindset so I can get from where I am to where I'm supposed to be and to understand that failure is absolutely the greatest resource on the planet. I mean, I don't just say that, I know it from, from personal experience. If you can get your mind geared towards seeing failure as a resource to help you become better, to become smarter, to become stronger, to become more humble, to be able to learn, to change directions in life, you're gonna be well on your way to becoming the person you were meant to be. Today is my January 1st. Happy New Year to all of you out there, by the way. It has to feel good, by the way. You create that moment right now. Uh, Colonel George Milton, folks are listening to you, and they've got to have two questions on their mind. Number one, uh, what type of clients does your firm work with these days? And number two, how did I get the book? Like, how did I stay in this conversation over and beyond the day? So take a moment and, and tell them about the book and, and how they can best connect with you and, of course, how they can get the book. Yes, sir. Uh, let, let me start off with uh, with Sam once again. Say thank you so much for this uh, this awesome opportunity here. But as far as companies, I'm uh, I'm, I'm you know, online with uh, with folks. I'm uh, military organizations, uh, different schools and uh, organizations that uh, I talk to. I'm in the process of actually. Uh, I think this is a pretty neat story. I, I'm in the process of actually trying to get a licensing deal with the merchandise that I have with my logo and my phrase. Uh, I was actually visiting with Mark Cuban not long ago. And um, I wanted him to give me a quote for uh, for my book. And he said, ah, man, you don't do the book thing. So I said, well, what, what about this here? You know, you know, a couple months later, I said, hey, what about this here? Uh, licensing deal with Nike, man. Uh, I really want to try to get something with those guys. What are your thoughts? He sent an email back to me and says, hey, look here. If Nike comes on board, I'm going to help. So what I did is I literally took my merchandise and I sent out three packages. I sent out a package to um, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Mensa. She is now the new uh, vice president and um, uh, general manager of Nike North America. I sent out a, a care package to John Donahoe, who is the CEO and president of Nike. And I also sent a package out to the founder, Phil Knight of Nike, right? So three different packages to those three different people. So those are the kinds of folks we're trying to reach out to, trying to start a failure is not the, 
problem campaign with athletes from from not only athletes but but anybody that's ever you know failed or had issues with this with this topic but focusing you know on the nike piece and there are some things that i was talking to with them i screenshotted the actual email that uh, mr cuban sent me and sent it to those guys too so i'm just kind of you know standing back waiting to see if you know they're willing to actually partner and do some stuff if they choose to do so that would be great we could exponentially get this message out there save some lives do some great stuff get some people you know you know changing their mindsets and this is just from a planetary standpoint do it from the entire planet man to change to see failure as positive as opposed to negative so those are some of the things i'm trying to do from the marketing strategically uh but as far as the book is concerned uh you can even go to amazon and, uh, and get that book, uh, you know, you have the book, the workbook, and also uh, the journal. If you really want to understand this particular concept, um, uh, you can buy, uh, you know, the book individually, you can buy the workbook individually, and also the journal. Or also, I combine my book and my workbook, and you can buy the book and the workbook in, into one, and then the journal, if you choose not to have a, a lot of books around. I typically like a, a lot of books and that sort of thing. Uh, you can contact me at... Um, uh, uh, you know, my website is, what is it? It's www.georgeamilton.com. That's georgeamilton.com. And uh, if you want to reach out, you can, you know, go on the blog and uh, reach out to that. Or my email address is george at georgeamilton.com. I say again, george at georgeamilton.com. Got it. For those folks out there, please write that down. Visit the book. Make sure you go out there, visit the website, get the book. But don't just buy one, buy two. Don't just buy two, buy three. Don't buy three, buy ten, and share it with someone else. Like, pay the message for it. Buy it for an organization. Buy it for a group. Buy it for a community. Do it now. Do it when. Do it now. We're moving to a segment called Rapid Fire. In Rapid Fire is a segment we get to ask, well, many questions, like we haven't already been doing that. This is on our mind. And uh, George <laughs> Milton can either take a pass or he can answer the question. And one of my, my favorite questions to ask almost every episode is, uh, Colonel George Milton, of all the mentors you've had along this journey of life, and you've had so many mentors, what's mm. one lesson you learned from any of the mentors that you would want to take and share with us now? Now, we may never meet your mentor, may never know their name, but we get to walk away with the lesson that you hold near and dear to your heart that we can take. And you, you at home, you tuned in right now, hit the share button, like hit the share button. Like you get to get a lesson from his mentor that he has in his heart right now that he's going to share with you. So you listen intently. Pay, hit the share button first. Hit the share button. I know I keep saying that. Hit the share button. Help someone else. So don't, don't keep this to yourself. And now over to George Milton. Wow. Wow. Powerful question. Um, I guess what I would share, I would say with you is, uh, we all come from all walks of life. Those are who are you know on this uh, this broadcast tonight, and um, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you know I, I was always taught you know from uh, uh, soldiers specifically, you know senior leaders within the confines of the of the military, uh, was this that it doesn't matter where you start. The issue at hand is where do you end up, right? Look at General Colin Powell. Look at this guy, C average student at best and one of the greatest soldiers to have ever worn the uniform. So I've learned over time in talking to folks that have actually mentored me is that it doesn't really matter where you started. What really matters is where you finish. And if you utilize failure in the right sort of way, you're gonna finish strong. Trust me, this is really about leadership. This is about service to others. And there is a tremendous, tremendous amount of, of stress and depression going on with this failure thing. You know, I ask people to, in, in, in one word definition, you're right, I ask 10 people to, in one word definition, tell me how failure makes you feel. And there are two words that typically come up, right? One is disappointed and the other one is depressed because of the failure. I was that guy uh, years ago, but I changed from being that guy then and to being the guy that I am now to where failure no longer has a stranglehold on me and I'm no longer depressed by it. Am I disappointed? There's a difference between being disappointed and depressed, right? I can be disappointed and continue to move forward momentum. Depression, on the other hand, was not that way for me. So I've gone beyond that. So yeah, it doesn't matter where you start. What matters is where you finish. Finish strong, everybody. Finish strong. Love it. Um, what does Colonel George Milton do for fun when he's not out saving the world, by the way, and helping people <laughs> not fail at what they do? Like, what do you do for fun these days, man? 
Oh man, with this this COVID thing has got me right. So um, to try to stay away from people is um, uh, I get up about zero five in the morning, man, go lift my weights, right? Because I get there at zero five in the morning, not a lot of people are on ground. But here's what I've done: is uh, my, my youngest daughter has decided that she thinks she wants to join the army, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, all right, all right. You know, dad started out as an enlisted dude. You know, I did the enlisted thing for about five, five and a half years. So uh, my thing is that no, stay in college. Everything's paid for, girl. I've already done that sort of stuff for you. It's just, all right. So, you know, my son, Jacob, you know, he's just high speed, second lieutenant, platoon leader now, doing this thing, serving our country, man, up in Alaska, loving life, doing great things. You know, HBCU graduate, Norfolk State University. Go Norfolk, go Norfolk. Go. Yeah, my oldest, you know, Sarah, 23 years old, business owner, special effects and makeup artist, you know, cosmetologist, licensed person. And then there's my baby, Elizabeth, right, who started out, you know, in college and wanted to do all this high speed stuff. But she's more of a talker than she is a doer, who? So, <laughs> so what I've decided that if you go ahead and drop out of school, sweetie, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Because, see, in our family, when you become 18 years of age, Che, we have what I call a plate-breaking ceremony. huh? <laughs> so we take the plate that you normally would eat off of, and we break that. Okay? And now you get a guest plate. <laughs> Which is which is which is a lot smaller, right? Oh, oh, oh brother, whole lot smaller. Don't hold nearly as much food. <laughs> I love it, man. That's that's, yeah, a, so that's, that's what a I'm good doing way of looking at it, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you 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 talk about being a voracious reader, and um, it's almost an unfair question. But you know, of, of all the books you read, and you know, take the Bible off. That's not really a book. That's its own separate thing. Take Think yeah. and Grow Rich off the plate. That's a separate thing by itself but of all the books you've read man what's one and they're all important to you every one of them but what's one that pops in mind so you know what i read this book and i just want to share the lesson from this book with the audience yeah yeah that's a number of books as you stated but um uh, uh it worked for me in life and leadership by general colin powell it worked for me in life and leadership general powell uh you know i don't have a lot of heroes uh but uh i've never met him but I've followed his career for a number of years, and this is one solid, solid uh, American man. And uh, I, I love the messages that uh, that he has. He, uh, you know, basic soldier, uh, basic soldier in tactics, but you know, loved his people, loved this country, uh, loved this nation, and it was all about service. At the end of the day, he and his wife, you know, Miss Amapal, they're still serving with America's promise today. So, uh, in life and leadership, right, by uh, General Powell, that was one that actually. Um, uh, I made a tremendous uh, impact on my life. Yeah, yeah, great book. Um, well, we're coming down the home stretch, man. So this is really the the, the second, the last, the last question, and then we'll we'll go ahead and um, we'll come down the home stretch. But you you mentioned that you you have four children that you're very proud of right now. They're doing a lot of things, and uh, if they got a chance to watch this long lost video file for some reason, they've got their hands on it. They're like my two adult kids. They don't watch anything, but let's just say that they do. <laughs> they finally get their hands on it. And there's just a, a, a message from dad and whatever's on your heart that you want to share with them. But we all will benefit as well. So not, not just your, your core kids. And I know there's different personalities. But what message would you share with them? And maybe you said it and you're giving a summary again here. But, but what message would you share for them and for you watching at home? Here's the good news. You get the benefit as well. Um, mm. This will help you as well. What comes top of mind? Wow. wow. Yeah, this is tremendously important to me, Jay. One of the things I like about you and, and what you talk about is you always talk about service to others, right? You know, my kids uh, have, have, have had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with me at the dinner table uh, as we sat and talked and, and had great meals. I love to cook. Uh, we love to eat and that sort of thing. But one of the things I've always drummed into their hearts and heads and minds is this. Always be an asset to our nation and not a liability, right? And I don't mean that to be negative. I mean that to be positive, right? Every single person that we are speaking to tonight has the opportunity to be an asset, you know, not only to the nation, but to your families, to your organizations, to uh, your calling upon the life that, you know, God has actually given you. But for my children, right, I always want them to remember that it is uh, incredibly important that you are an asset to the nation and not a liability and service is how we go about doing that. Yeah, well said, man. Thanks so much for uh, sharing your time with us. The one thing I know about it, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. 
and you've given us the most precious resource you have. You have a heart to give. You certainly have a heart to serve. Thanks for serving tonight. Thanks for serving our country, and thanks for making a difference in the world. We certainly appreciate that. I want to turn over to you, man, that, to have your, your final thoughts, um, your, your final comments that you'd like to share. First, share with the folks once again how they can get the book. So for those yes, folks sir, that are just tuning ahead, in. You know, Amazon.com, man. Go ahead. <laughs> get out there. You know, get with it. All right? Get jiggy with it. Go out there. And, and remember, you know, if – and this is not, you know, to sell the book. But I mean, look, it'd be nice to sell the book, right? But what you really want to do is you want to be able to share this information. I, I, I truly, truly believe that this was a book that was written through, uh, you know, from God through me based upon a lot of the experiences that I had. Because initially throughout my life, I just thought I'd never amount to much. And all this failure thing just was just over, overwhelming. And when I really understood, as I do now, that all of those failures that I had along the way, you know, those are the kinds of things that I'm able to be able to use to be able to help people. And that's what all this writing is about. So get out there on Amazon.com, uh, order that book, uh, man, and let's blow this thing up. Let's transform the planet. So failure becomes not this shameful sort of event that we have, but something in which we look forward to and something about which we can learn from and something about which we can actually grow from. Mm, thank you so much. We appreciate it. By the way, for those folks that are out there watching, you've been listening to the one and only Colonel George Milton. Thank you for tuning in. For everybody hit the share button, we certainly appreciate it. If you want to hit the share button now, you can do that as well. It's never too late to share this message with someone else. They can watch it. They can learn. They can grow. I want you to know as you're listening that you're already a winner. You're already a champion. Only champions are here. Only the winners are here. And for you, today is your January 1st because failure is just the first step to the key to success. For you, today is your January 1st. You got this. You can do this. You can learn the lesson. And for you, for you to watch it right now, put your sunglasses on. The future is bright. And for you, the best is still yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is still yet to come. With that being said, my name for those that care is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember this. Time is long. Life, on the other hand, well, it's very, very short. So you got to live in the moment and you got to make it count. God bless. We wish you success. Peace. Thanks a lot. We appreciate you, Colonel. We're out of here. Bye bye, everyone. Thanks. Talk to you later. Peace. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shea Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we know how to work. Got money on my mind. I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.